Hello, welcome back to the Off-Grid family. Today we're going to be turning one of these into one of these. Basically, we are going to be etching our own circuit boards, or in this case, our own pictures. This is to celebrate the launch of my two new books. I will tell you more about that as we go on. Before we continue, I'd just like to thank Simon and David for being my Patreons. You guys have supported the channel and you are awesome. Uh, if you'd like to become a Patreon, pop down in the description box, there's a link to it. And um, it would just help out the channel if you could do that. Anyway, let's get on. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean it with isopropyl alcohol and get rid of all these fingerprints, and then I'm going to spray paint it. Okay, so that's done, but it's highlighted a few other problems with this, but it's not a major issue. Um, I'm going to spray paint this and a couple of other ones, and I'm just going to use black spray paint, and I'm going to do a very, very thin layer, and then I'm going to use this one as our test. Okay, so that's spray painted and dried and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go upstairs and I'm going to um, etch out tiny squares and slowly fine tune the laser more and more and more until I can use it on the lowest setting possible that would still get rid of the black um, and basically we'll go from there. Okay so I'm going to start off by etching a square the same size as a PCB into our sacrificial piece of wood and this just allows us to place them in the exact same place each time in case we need to retouch any of it up etc. After carefully sorting out the PCB, I use my phone's calculator to display the number I put my laser's intensity on, and that way I've got a visual record and can keep track of the exact numbers I'm dealing with. This wasn't anywhere near enough, it took some of it off but wouldn't be anywhere near enough to be able to etch this PCB at all. I continue to try this until I finally managed to get it to the right number. And I'll test a few other bits and bobs. I'll go higher and lower either way, but only just by slight amounts until I've got the exact number I need. But we are at the point where we can actually get on with the fun bits. The reason we're not talking specific numbers is each person's laser is different, and that's why I'm just outlining the actual technique. Here is one of the characters from my book, and he's a super fast tortoise postman, and he will be the first person we're deciding to print out on PCB. Okay, so everything I'm colouring black will end up being the colour of the PCB, and everything white will be the colour of the copper of the actual PCB. Um, you can do this either way around. You can have the character being mainly copper, or you can have the outlines mainly copper. You can do it however you like, but I'm choosing it to do it this way around. There will be a lot of undoing on this because I'm I'm not sure. It's sort of artistic, isn't it? It's up to you which way round you do this and what you have is copper coloured. So there will be a lot of undoing, but I'll get there in the end. At about this point, I decide I'm going to actually put some of the wording from the book in it. So I basically just copy and paste that in as well towards the end of this. And um, it just adds a little extra depth. Next I work on the Carpenter Hammerhead Shark and um, he's one of my favourite characters just purely by his aesthetics to be honest. Um, but I do him and then after this I do the Chick Doctor which I, di I didn't record but the Chick Doctor I do something a little bit special with and I will show you that as we come to it. As we come to the end of this section of the video I'm going to do a shameless plug of my book. So today is the release day of my two books. They are children's books and they are rhyming books and they are silly books. If you enjoy reading to your children or if your children are at the age where they are just learning to read, I think these books will be quite a lot of fun. Uh, I will read segments out in different sections of the shorts that I'm going to be releasing. So if you're not already subscribed, subscribe and then check out the short section and you should be able to, uh, you know, pick up a few of the lines that, you know, and hopefully you'll see if they're funny or not. But I'd appreciate it if you pop over to Amazon they are literally on sale now, and um, I will put all the links down below. Okay, so we start our lasering doing, as I said earlier, my favourite one, which is the Hammerhead Shark Carpenter. And um, these go pretty well. There were a few camera issues, believe it or not. Normally there's other technical issues, but today it was camera issues. I did get the best camera angles I could, but there were, you know, very few camera angles I could get it at. That one looks really nice. 
Okay, this is the check one. I didn't show the actual making of the image. Uh, this one goes okay, but there are problems with the cross at the top, but I sort that out with a scalpel later on. And this one is slightly different because I do a version like this and then an inverted version for a specific reason, which I will show you later. With this one, I add the text as well, and I think that one looks absolutely epic. Now we come on to the tortoise postman. I decide this one needs a little bit of text as well, just to make it pop. The text on this one, sadly, is slightly off the um, the PCB, and as you can see, it's my fault. It's I've not put it on properly, but that's life. Now this one is the one I originally used as a test sheet, and something's not quite right with it. If you have a look at the lines on it, it doesn't take off all of the paint as it should. Uh, it really doesn't go well. It's like the laser's losing power part way through, and I'm not sure what caused this. I do end up solving this problem and making this work anyway, but as you'll see, it's just not coming off in all the places it should. Okay, so here are all four of them, and you'll notice that some are better than others. This one's awful. This one looks fantastic. I'll, I'll show you properly. This one looks really, really good. This one looks quite good. There's a few patches where it wasn't so good. Up here and here, I had to actually scratch pieces off, but I went a bit too hard and scratched a bit of the copper off, but that's not an issue at all, because we're going to be getting rid of that in a minute. Um, so that one's okay. This one had quite a few places where it hadn't cut through all the way. And then this one was awful. And it's like, they're literally brilliant, good, mm, okay, rubbish. And I realised it's because I wasn't um, propping them up. They weren't the right focal length. Length. This one started off at the right length, um, the right distance from the laser. And then slowly, oh, as I was moving everything around, it got further and further away. So it was completely user error. But I'm not bothered. I'm still going to use them. So let's show you what you need to do next. Okay, so the next part, we're going to actually etch away all of the copper that's exposed due to the laser taking away the paint. For that, we're going to use ferric chloride, uh, which is in this container. Ferric chloride is very nasty. So, first off, it also stains like hell. So you do not want this stuff on your fingers. You'll, you'll have it on your fingers for days. But it's also very, very nasty. So you're going to want safety goggles, gloves anyway, and then various things to be able to move the item around in the ferric chloride solution. So... First off, I'm going to sort myself out, kit myself up. I had considered cleaning this all up and giving it a bit of a clean over and all that, and I thought, there's not really much point. We'll do the best with this as we can. And the areas where the um, copper hasn't been completely removed, it may actually still etch there quite nicely. Um, I'm not sure if you noticed, but the R of run di didn't get put on, but I'm not majorly bothered. Okay, so first off, Ferric chloride very carefully poured into our container. Obviously make sure that the container is big enough for your um, your actual PCB. Not that I've ever been stupid enough not to do that, of course. And now gently and carefully I'm just going to plonk it in. Thought it wasn't going to fit then, didn't you? Right. Okay, I'm going to put a timer on and I'm going to come back in maybe two or three minutes and we'll just check on it, see how it goes and go from there. Okay, we're nearly at the three minute mark. I just want to try something. Okay, it's now removing the, the darker coloured bits that hadn't come off with the laser. Hopefully it's not going to start removing the paint. So that's one thing I didn't check was whether the paint was stable under ferric chloride, but it seems to be. All I'm going to do is just rub over, there you go, can you see the lines looking a little bit sharper? Okay, let's take this out and let's have a quick look at it. Because I'm not sure it's working too well. There's no signs of the copper coming off yet. But it hasn't been too, too long. So we'll just put it back in again. Oh, there we go. Now we're going through. By the way, I'm not rubbing hard with this um, paintbrush at all. I'm literally just sort of just brushing the surface of the actual PCB. Now, when it starts to break through the copper layer, 
it tends to go quite quickly after that like if this was just let's say a solid block of PCB copper then it'd start breaking through here and it would just very very quickly open up everywhere but obviously this is all different separate pieces so it might take a little longer now obviously if you'd wanted to you could have just left it with the copper of the you know the copper trace through and the black outline but I'm hoping to clean all this up now um, after we've got all of the copper etched and do something with the board and I'm not sure what yet I haven't decided um, but this is why I'm doing it but you know it's not a bad look if you were to well if you'd have lined it up in the laser properly um, then you know you can get quite nice results there will be another video soon where I'm going to do a whole different version of this but similar and I'm being cryptic for a reason all right I'll leave it for another like five minutes I'll go get a coffee and then I'll come back and I'll just give it a little rub with the paintbrush again and we'll just keep doing that until it's all etched itself off okay it's been probably about 20 minutes now so this oh there we go but look at that it's literally peeling off now I'd usually use a toothbrush. I don't know why I'm not using it today because a toothbrush is so much better designed for this. I'd normally have an old toothbrush on standby. But I've had to use one of the new ones. I buy very, very cheap toothbrushes for projects like this, but um, I wouldn't normally use a new one. I'm not made of money. Obviously, if you are going to use a toothbrush, make sure no one's going to ever use it by mistake. Right, so we are getting rid of some of it in certain places. The hat and the shell have done quite well. Now we're just going to wait for the rest of it to catch up. Right, I added a little bit more ferric chloride um, and I have been rubbing it with the toothbrush. I think we're about there. Let me have a look. It's still a little bit on the envelope. And down at the up uh, well the part of the R that isn't really there anymore so I'll just give it a little bit more time a little bit more of a rub I mean now obviously I'm trying not to flick this everywhere and as long as you take it slow you should be okay but again wear protective clothes please when I say protective clothes I mean obviously hazmat suit etc no you know just glasses and um, some gloves just to be sure you really don't want to lose your eyes to something so silly so have a look all right I think we're there so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean this off and you can put it in all sorts of things like bicarbonate water to stop the reaction but I'm going to actually just dip it into a cold bath of water which I will get now. Okay, so here's our water. I'm just gonna get as much ferric chloride off as I can. And then plop it in. Now I want to do a quick test, which I should really have done before all this, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to plonk the next bit in, the next piece that needs to be etched. And um, this shouldn't take as long because I obviously put a little bit more strength to this ferric chloride but I'm just going to leave that to sit in there now while we go on to the next bit and I will keep an eye on it every so often. I made a little moat out of hot glue, split it down the centre and I'm going to put isopropyl alcohol in one side and acetone in the other and we'll see which one takes up the actual paint the quickest. And now we just wait and I'll give it like 10 minutes and then I'll rub it off and see which one rubs off easiest. Right, I'm being quite impatient. It's probably only been about five minutes, but I would just like to see what it looks like, which one seems to be winning. So isopropyl alcohol's on this side, and that cleans up the area that, you know, was only partially dugified, but it's not doing much to the actual main um, the main black stuff so let's see if it's any better with the yeah okay so that even the um, uh, acetone my brain's gone numb even the acetone doesn't seem to want to do much so 
So I, I did notice a little bit more from the isopropyl alcohol. I can, you might not be able to pick it up on this. No, but it's actually starting to break this little co connective bit here. Whereas this one doesn't seem to be doing anything. And that's what it looks like at the moment. Believe it or not, tortoises un faster than you think. Right, that's not quite big enough and the rest of my isopropyl alcohol is out of the way so we're going to have to just use this stuff. Um, so I've got something that's a bit bigger. And that way we can actually watch it slowly, um, hopefully coming off, but we'll see. Okay, a, a few minutes have passed. I'm not entirely sure how many, but I'd like to see if any of this is going to come off. It seems a little sticky. Oh, and look, can you see that on the camera? Nope, not a sausage. Now, once again, I'm not sort of scratching this off or anything. I'm literally letting the paintbrush do its job. That's why you can hear it sort of bouncing along. Okay, now I've made a sort of little gap, a little few little holes. It should start to actually, hopefully, open out and blossom like a beautiful flower or just, you know, start dissolving quicker, whichever one. Right, I found a very, very time consuming way of getting rid of this, but it's not um, disappearing in just the isopropyl alcohol on its own, but with a, an abrasive cloth and a lot of elbow grease. knackered now I might have to go and have a lie down and try again in a minute but I will keep doing this and I'll be back in a minute this literally is taking me well this has been about five minutes already my thumbs already killing me my fingers already killing me so um yeah it's it's okay but it's like the, the bigger bits seem to be okay but like trying to target a smaller bit is quite painful but it will get there hopefully um, but I think it's from keeping it in the water um, in the isopropyl alcohol seems to break it up slightly and then having something that's slightly abrasive with more isopropyl alcohol on it seems to do the trick okay it's been a hundred years but I've actually got it cleaned um, it looks a bit smudged in this light but it's literally just sort of like imperfections in the copper but um, believe it or not tortoises and faster than you think still what do you think let's get on with the other ones right let's have a look at this one yeah that one's gone really well actually so we'll drip it off and we'll put it in the water and then i'll just put the next one in and obviously i'm not going to show you this process for all of them uh, I'll keep recording in case anything interesting does happen. Not that that tends to happen on my videos. But, um, yeah, I'll be back once I've done a few more. There's the number two. Okay, so here they are, nearly completely finished. Now, you can obviously make frames for these, etc, etc, but what do you think about these characters? Aren't they lush? Now, you'll notice these two are slightly different. That is for a specific reason, which I will show you in a minute. Um, but, yeah, I absolutely love these things, and I will be talking about how you guys can get hold of one of these at the end of this video. So now I've polished them with a bit of Brasso. Um, just any polish will do, and they look much, much better. So first off, I'm going to put them in an old frame I got and then I'm going to move on to why we've got that one like that okay so there's a way of displaying them if you would if you so wish obviously these can go just directly up on the wall and they look really nice or you can actually make a little wooden frame also looks really nice but let's have a look at why this one is different from this one okay for this next part you're going to need a small button cell battery doesn't really matter what size a button cell battery holder potentially you don't really need to you can make your own if you want to and then i've got two leds i've got a flashing led which we'll use and then a i think it's a yellow led we won't be using it but i need a part of it um first off i'm going to drill the little pads that i've made okay i've got a tiny tiny little drill bit on my homemade drill and i'm just as i say going to drill out all these pads OK, 
Okay, I'm not sure if you can see them, but we've gone all the way through. Next, we're going to get soldering. I'm going to cut the end off of this. This came out of an old... I think it was an old camcorder, something like that, but you can get them, either buy them or get them off of um, the motherboards of old computers, etc. Okay, now, the reason we've got the actual other LED is we're going to cut its legs off. Oh, not my legs. Sorry. Now, I'm not sure you're going to be able to, yeah. I bent it into two L shapes. On the first one, I'm going to put in here. Now we're going to take our second L shape. And we're going to spruce it up a little. I've made it. Like that. It's got a little spiral on the top. And that is going to go here. Okay. So let's turn off some lights. And this one. And then if we press our button. So all I'm going to do now is hot glue this to the back. And that's another one done. Okay, so these are both on sale now, and if you do decide to buy them and want to be added into our prize draw, all you need to do is take a photo of yourself holding the book, and then put it over to Instagram. My Instagram information is down at the bottom. Once you've put it on my Instagram, then I'll put you into a prize draw, and I will send you one of the items in this video. And I'll message you first, and you can decide which one you want, to be honest. So, please, make sure you buy them. I'd really appreciate it. Bye for now.